Hello nerds, today is not Sunday, April the 21st, 2019, but it was a few days ago, and on that day we had the 111th game of the Meditation Games. So I'm gonna talk about the game now, because... Well, better now than never, I guess. So this meditation was made by Ryan Maloney, Lexi Zaro, Rachel Ellis, and Stephen Siegel. Not that Stephen Siegel. But they've left a very, very short blurb for us, which I'll read out for you now. When was the last time you looked up at the sky and watched clouds as they went by? When was the last time you used hieroglyphics to describe what they looked like? We welcome you to make your answer today. I have genuinely never used hieroglyphics to describe uh, clouds before, so this was the first time for me. So this game is what I tend to refer to as a noodle game or a doodle game or whatever. Uh, basically, the idea is there's no win state, there's no lose state, there's no real objective. The game is literally just a bunch of things that you interact with and you can mess about in that as much as you like. It's not really a sandbox. I don't feel it's a sandbox. It's significantly simpler than that. Like, in a sandbox, your actions tend to actually impact the gameplay, whereas this typically doesn't, and this one is a very good example of that. All the stuff that you put in, uh, it doesn't actually influence what happens in the game. So what happens is, uh, as you can see, a cloud will scroll past and you have three sections of hieroglyphics and you can only pick one from each of those sections. That's kind of where my understanding breaks down. I don't know if the idea is you put in the hieroglyphics that look like the cloud that's passing by. Uh, that's what I tried anyway. Uh, and I I couldn't really do it. <laughs> it didn't fit the shape, so I didn't really know. Uh, if there is more to it, if the hieroglyphics mean a sound or something and they're meant to correlate with the clouds that are passing by, I didn't find it. I didn't discover it. Uh, in which case, I would be completely wrong in asserting that this was a sort of uh, noodle game. I'll be perfectly honest, I didn't find much enjoyment from the game. But there is something I do want to talk about, which this game highlighted really, really well for me. Like I said, I didn't get much in the way of personal enjoyment from me. And that's not because it's a bad game or anything like that. It doesn't appeal to me, and that's fair enough. I tend to prefer more uh, interactive stuff. That's kind of what I game for. And I had a look at what some people were saying about the game. And a lot of people were actually talking about how much they enjoyed it. The first one I saw was a Reddit post saying how much they absolutely loved just messing about and having a noodle around. And I have really come to appreciate that from meditation games, because this is something that I would have completely never even given a second look at. But with the meditation games, there are games that play in ways I never would have pursued and never really looked into before playing this. But also, Meditations has a community around it. So seeing what people say about it, seeing what people talk about and how people react to all the games has been really, really good insight into how diverse the term gamer is, what it entails, what people get enjoyment out of. And I really appreciate having that perspective. It doesn't mean I will suddenly enjoy games that I just don't enjoy, but it has very much changed how I view games these days. Um, it hasn't really changed my tastes much. I've got a deeper appreciation for games like Walking Sims, which I, I never cared for before. But they're not a game of action. They're not a game of win states and lose states. They're a game of exploration, a game of discovery, a game of interpretation a lot of the time. And there's been a lot of those games that I've hated in the past, but... Well, hate is a strong word. I, I didn't bother with, I didn't play. But having seen what some people have made of meditations and what they've made uh, outside of meditations as well, uh, yeah, like I said, it's really broadened my perspective of what constitutes as a game. And I love the fact that a game like this, a game that I, like I said, I, I didn't get anything from it, a lot of people still did. And that's really fucking cool. I really like them. So this is actually an interesting project uh, for a second reason as well. The guy I mentioned at the end there, that's Stephen Siegel. <laughs> I should assume that's how you pronounce your name. I do apologise if it isn't. But he's actually uh, a lecturer at Northeastern University, I think it's called. The actual creators of today's game were the three other people. They're three of his students. And what's really cool is the three students are also currently working with, I assume it's a bunch of other students. I, I didn't see any note on that. They're working on a game called Dead Boy. And I kind of love that a group of students are kind of currently together to make a game with the intention of releasing it like a studio forming straight out of a university i kind of like that that's uh, that's awesome to see and dead boy actually looks really damn cool it's a game i'm kind of looking forward to now dead boy is probably best described as 
Uh, I'm not sure what this type of game is called, but the most notable examples that, I, that spring to my mind are Lost Vikings and uh, <laughs> some of the really old school D&D games like Heroes of the Lance, where you control multiple characters and you have to swap between them. And each one's got different skills and different abilities and you have to switch between them to navigate through uh, a level. The most appealing things is I like that kind of gameplay anyway. I find it a lot of fun. Uh, I like a good puzzle platformer. But the art style is awesome. The tone of the game is really damn cool. It's got a feeling of um, sort of Tim Schafer slash Tim Burton. Let's face it, Tim Schafer is the Tim Burton of video games, only far cooler. You know, this wouldn't look out of place with Double Fine or with Nightmare Before Christmas or something like that. It's got that kind of cute horror look to it, I suppose is the only way to describe it. It's quirky and I really like the direction they've taken with that. And the story is about five lost souls. I assume dead who are traversing the afterlife to save uh, another soul i don't know if that's the the titular dead uh, dead boy that you're playing as there who you are saving I, I don't know the full context of the story but but having seen their gameplay demo from pax and uh, a couple of snippets of gameplay from various other sources uh yeah the game actually looks really really cool it looks awesome i'm really looking forward to it and the music's really damn good as well because there's a lot of contributors and they all have their port own portfolio sites and they're also working on their own game the bit below would just become a link fest so i'm gonna trim down a little bit over what i would normally do i'll link the twitter accounts of all four of the creditors underneath and i'll also leave a link below to the dead boy website which there's not much on there that i can see but there is a mailing list on there so if you're interested in the game you can at least hop onto the mailing list each of the contributors of today's games kind of got some link or another leading to a different thing about dead boy so if you're interested in looking up that game um have a look at what the creators are doing and you can find their work through them so yeah go below and investigate stuff so a huge thank you to ryan lexi and rachel for making today's game and thank you to Stephen for teaching these kids <laughs> and thank you very much for watching i'll see you again tomorrow take care